Okay, so we're going to move on now. Um, I wasn't proposing this time to, um, to, to kind of run through the whole atlas like we did with Osborne, uh, partly because, partly because you, you probably don't need to have another run through of an atlas after having had one already. It gives you a little bit of familiarity as to how we're structuring the data. Uh, but the other reason is that we wanted to focus instead on, well, I better close that because that's the wrong one. Um, I'm just going to start this again. The, 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 we wanted to focus on, on some of the, um, on, on, a, on actually thinking about some of the, uh, you know, some of the actual geo geological characteristics of Eloise. And, and um, uh, you know, in the same way that Paul um, acknowledged uh, Chinova for providing a lot of data, we really should acknowledge FMR because um, they provided us, it is FMR, isn't it? Yeah. They provided us with um, the, a, a lot of information in the end. They, they've actually given us a lot of information that's uh, greatly improved the, um, uh, you know, the atlas. So, um, uh, and oh, the other thing I was going to say is that, um, as I said earlier this morning, there's a bunch of dongles up here in the front, and for this, for this part of the exercise, the one that you would have been given yesterday is absolutely fine, but there's actually a slightly updated version of the, um, of the, um, of the dongles sitting up here at the front that we'll probably need for the geochemical part. It doesn't actually change the, um, well, Nathan made some small final changes to the, to the geoscience analyst part, but we've actually fixed a, a positioning problem and added some, some further surface geochemical data that it'll be worthwhile. At some point while we're working through this exercise, if you come up to the front, drag, grab one of the dongles and just add the next, add version three of the, of the Eloise Atlas um, and open up or, or get that file and have a look at it, that'll give you access to the data that we need for the, for the geochemical part of the exercise. Okay, so um, now I've got a Documents. Eloise Atlas Files version three. Yeah, so it's called. It's it's a. Uh, it's under the Townsville USB content. It's called Eloise Atlas Files version three, and um, what it has in it, you probably can't see that, but it's just got. It's got some um, underlying data for for the the interpretation exercise. It's got those images that I gave you printouts of. If you're interested in those. Um, we're about to do this shoot exercise, so there's a couple of bits from Tim Baker's thesis in there. Um, oh, and, and the other thing, of course, is that the PDF, the PDF of the actual atlas is, uh, is on those dongles as well. So you're probably looking through your thing, thing where's, the, where's the actual atlas? Well, that's, that's where it is. So, like I said, I'm not going to run through the, the atlas in the same way, but what I will do, I think, is uh, just comment a little bit. Um, just go back briefly to that, uh, to the exercise we did before. And so again, you know, we've got all the, we've got the various geophysical images, not the exact one that I, I used for that exercise before, but something similar. So, so that's the, the reduced to the pole magnetic sitting over top of the, um, um, sitting, sitting over top of the, the first vertical derivative. And uh, if we go down to the section here called Jericho Altia, which should be on the version that you have now, um, I'll just, uh, I'll turn off the plans. And, and turn on a couple of sections. So if we go down to, down to Altia, and then, um, so there's that bag anomaly. I've just turned it sideways. And uh, there's, the, there's the actual section for the system. So uh, I think I, no, I had the dip. So it's dipping, dipping steeply to the east. Uh, and uh, so it's a, a, you know, a, a series of biffs amphibolite out here. In the, in, in the background of a, of a samopolitic unit, or a politic air, aeronite sounds like a samopelite to me. Um, and uh, and these, this is the Altia zone in here. So there's some pretty good numbers in there. 20 meters at 
lead and 26 grams silver, they're, they're okay. They're, yeah, so, um, and then Jericho, uh, These are just sections from uh, uh, sections from Minotaur's press releases showing the showing the, the Jericho zone. So I'll turn off. Yeah, there's that's the one from the from the presentation Glenn gave in um, um, you know showing showing two different zones that the two different conductors J1 and J2 um, and and again if we bring the, bring the mag back in. That shows. Shows where that is. So it's just cutting across these subtly magnetic units. So so I just I just thought I'd show that. But what we're gonna do now, the exercise the exercise you'd like to do now, um, so we've got that up already. We've got the history. Is to look at the is to look at the, um, the the shoot. So one of the one of the um, one of the things that FMR provided was their full drill data set, um, a pretty up to date drill data set, as well as solids for their ore bodies. So so um, what we included in the um, what we included in in the, in the atlas was uh, um, all of the loads. So so you can see if you go to the workspace, if you go down to Eloise ore lenses. All of these 40 load, 40 load, they're all um, the solids. They're they're solids, but what we've also done, and uh, and and um, we're, I'm, I don't think I'm going to win any leapfrog prizes for this. Um, our job wasn't to wasn't to do a structural interpretation of this. It's to put up the data. So we've done an isotropic um, one gram or one percent copper grade shell. Of the um, of the shoot, um, and so that's about a I think that's about 1.4 kilometers. It's a truly impressive. Um, I thought Ernest Henry was a linear ore body. Well, this one isn't a linear ore body. It's like a flatworm. It's uh, it's or a ribbon. It's in incredibly um, uh, you know it's got an incredible uh, depth extent, plunge extent, um, and. Uh, there's a couple of different zones, as you can see, see here, and they're at a slight angle to each other. Um, but the overall plunge um, is, uh, you know, of the of the and there's a break in here. And if you if we actually bring in the uh, the faults, where are the faults? What's that? Oh, at the very bottom, yeah. Structures. They've, they've also provided us their, their um, database of structures. The, these are structures, I think, that, and again, uh, we're not professing any expertise in this. I've never been to Eloise. We haven't, haven't done any work on it. We're just really showing the, the information we've been given. But they look mainly like structures that are, um, and, and certainly Tim Baker's work um, talks about this as well. They're structures that are overprinting the ore body or um, you know, cutting the ore body rather than synchronous with mineralization. Um, but uh, uh, you know what you can see. That, so that's that's all their structures. I'm going to take them off because they don't seem to be controlling the mineralization. But one of the big questions that came to my mind um, was, um, you know, why? It's a similar sort of question that we asked ourselves at Ernest Henry. Why do you have this shape of ore body, this incredible elongated plunge? So. Um, what I wanted to do now was to just pose that question um, and um, and basically we'll go around the room and, and help you find what you need to find in the data um, because there's there's um, uh, you know the faults that I that I put up there there's a series of plans there's geophysics there's also um, a series of sections from from Tim Baker's thesis there's not too many other published sections out there but but if you bring those up, there's a whole series of sections showing the uh, showing the lithological variations. There's also the the um, the actual atlas. So what I what I wanted to do was was uh, leave that at the, there and and give you guys 10 or 15 maybe 10 minutes 
to actually have a look through the database and think about what are the possible things that are controlling that incredible, that incredible elongation of the ore body. Okay. Um, I, was, I was saying to someone just now, we've been staring at this, I've been staring at this for a little while now, and haven't quite worked it out myself yet, so I, I was hoping as I went around somebody would have sorted it out and I could take credit for it, but, but um, um, and, and maybe that's happened, but uh, um, does anyone have any ideas as to, as to the, the possible reason for extreme elongation in that direction? Intersection, Intersection lineation, what were you going to say? Yeah, those are those are both very you know very apt kind of they're both they're both very good possibilities. Any other ones? The other the other thing that, that a few people have, or that that has been brought up but haven't hasn't really been documented is well maybe that's parallel to a fold axis, you know that there's some sort of tight fold that's that it's following. Um, doesn't really seem to be the case in the, uh, you know, I have to say that we, we, we're, we're, we're doing this with the, with the information that we have, so I'm sure that there are, that there are, you know, that there are more complete ways to do this, but what I just wanted to do was to um, make a couple of, you know, I guess provide a little bit more information, and what I should say is that, you know, like I said, I, w I wouldn't have expected you to read this in the 10 minutes I just gave you, but in that, in that new dongle I've, I've included, um, a section from Tim Baker's thesis um, that has some of his structural measurements. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, what you can see over here is the, though there's not very many bedding orientations in there, the cleavage is very much the, so the pole says to basically the cleavage is pretty strongly north-south. The interesting one to me is the, is the mineral lineations. I mean, they're kind of all over the place, but there's a strong maximum parallel to that fold plunge. So that really suggests that, that there's some credence to the fact that maybe it's partly being strung out um, parallel to, uh, to a deformation direction. So these are mineral stretching lineations. And uh, um, you know, a couple of th it brings to mind a couple of things. One is, is the fact that, you know, that, that if you're gonna produce a linear ore body, producing a parallel to lineation is what you might expect. The other thing is that it's quite common to have a situation where if, you, if you're sitting in a broad shear zone, if you've got a perturbation on that shear zone that, that you can, that's, that's got a short wavelength that you can then end up with um, uh, an extension of that uh, perturbation over a very long distance parallel to the lineation. But actually, um, as far as I know, um, nobody's really sorted out exactly why that, or I, I haven't seen anything that that um, that that says exactly why you, you end up getting that that incredibly long plunge. Tim Baker um, had his his um, had, had three different potential e explanations. Um, he quoted a, a a a report that I haven't seen from Paul Pearson, where Paul was looking at. Um, plotting the, the orientations of Boudin necks, you know, so, so um, um, the, the axes where, where different competent units have been pulled apart. And it actually, it didn't, the, the Boudin necks didn't plot parallel to that plunge, but they sort of formed a, they, they formed a conjugate set around that plunge, and he thought that that might, might explain it, but Tim's response to that was, well, there's no real macroscopic evidence of it. And then Bill Lang suggested that maybe it's, the, the intersection between a set of veins and, and embedding stage two veins. And again, Tim's comment on that was there wasn't any macroscopic evidence for it. Um, and his, I think, preferred explanation was that you have this, um, you know, if you go back to the, if you go back to the magnetics, if it's there, oh no, we got rid of it. Uh, bring it up again. You have this, um, I think, uh, you know, wh whichever one of these you look at, you have a series of, you know, you can't explain this geometry of units uh, with layer parallel shears in there. Um, and uh, because you go from one, two, three, four, five magnetic units here to two down in here, so they've got to be 
cutting out um, against shears that, that don't look necessarily look like they're charging across the countryside in here. Um, same thing happens out in here in some of the portrayals of the data. So it really looks like there are a series of north-south shear zones and that uh, um, his thoughts were that, that the lithological layering that, that appears to be um, sort of in the area of mineralization, if it was coming in and perhaps um, dipping a little bit way against steeper shears, that that intersection and, and what he was particularly focused on was an area of competency contrast between aeronites and um, that that the intersection between those lithological contacts and the and the um, load shears as he called them was uh, potentially presentation of shears. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's def there's definitely a northwest fault through there as well. But it's, it's um, when you actually look at the what they provided. Now, maybe it, it would have to be, to produce that, it would have to be a northwest trending, but quite shallowly southwest dipping fault. And I, that's what I kind of thought. But when the FMR guy sent us their data set, that's a vertical fault. So if you have a vertical fault through there, it's not going to explain a chute that plunges to the south. But, but I, I mean, I agree with, I, that's a, that was the first thing I thought. I thought oh, that's easy. You've got a, a fault cutting through here. The ore body's sitting here spatially associated with this fault, so all that has to happen is the faults dipping to the southwest and, and, and that, that intersection is controlling it, but it, it's, you know, what they said was that the fault's vertical, what they've mapped that, so, but. Light faults, that? Light faults that that. Yeah, I think, uh, well, that's, that was kind of the implication from the, from the data, so. Okay, so the next, So that's that. The next one, um, and, and this is sort of an exercise um, that, that would probably be, so has, has everyone got version three now of the, uh, a zip file of the version three? Um, so what, what I was gonna do now, and this is kind of like, uh, it's partly a, an exercise looking at the geochemical data from Eloise, but it's partly to just, you know, having, run through now with various kind of subsets of this audience, the, the structure of the atlas, I thought it might be worthwhile to show you an example of, of getting data into the atlas. And it just happened that we'd, we'd, um, we'd plotted some of the, the, there are three different orientation surveys that were done at Eloise. There was, uh, um, and uh, this is from the, the geochem toolkit. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of, I feel sort of like we're, we're, we're sort of like uh, guinea pig users of the geochem toolkit, but, but every one of the atlas entries that we've done so far, nearly every one, we've been able to go back to the geochem toolkit and find a whole lot of good stuff. Um, and, and in the case of this, there, there was a, a, an orientation survey that was done by, uh, by, uh, by Extrata in 2009 um, looking at three different things. They did an aquaregia soil survey. And so once we get that data input, um, we're going to try plotting silver, copper, bismuth, and nickel, um, because those are the ones that they found to be interesting. And then there's this gore soil gas method. Um, and uh, rather, than, rather than imparting my knowledge of the gore soil gas method to you, actually, I've just imparted my knowledge of the soil gas, gore soil gas method to you, um, I've provided Appendix A of the Geochem Toolkit, which actually has more information than you ever want on uh, the gore soil gas method, and metal soil gas. So we've got three different sort of partial extraction or, or kind of out there see-through cover type geochem methods. Um, to, uh, that were sampled, uh, you know, as Nathan pointed out already, they were sampled when all this infrastructure was here, and the GTK is absolutely full of disclaimers about this, you know, that there are so many potential sources of contamination to this that we need to keep track of them, uh, or that we need to be aware of them, but, uh, you know, taking that into account, um, this is the this is the data, and what I've written, I've, I've, you know, you know, when you see like you see CNN or something, in, in uh, and they've got American, um, uh, American um, medicine ads on TV, and they always say, 
you know, please see your doctor if such and such is right for you. So I'm just saying down here, please see your geochem doctor if you think GORE and MSG might be right for you. Um, you know, but, uh, um, so, but what we've, what we've got in there is only the, the, uh, the MSG data so far in the atlas. Um, and, uh, and, and the other thing, like I said, when you plot that, so if we go to the geochemistry, we can plot up that, that data. Um, I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to show you how to, how to manipulate the geochem data a little bit. And some of you may know this already if you've got the GTK or if you've, got, um, uh, if you've already played with this a little bit. Um, but so that's the, um, that's the, the MSG soil gas method. And if you just choose an element, um, all you do is you click on silver and, and up comes silver and it just plots it as these kind of boring dots that you may or ne may not be able to see against everything else. Um, so what I'm going to go over to here is just choose a, a node size. I'm going to, I'm going to choose a node symbol and change that to a sphere and then increase the node size to something like 15 rather than 10. And you can actually scale the size of the nodes by, um, by the same thing. So I'm, going, I'm doing silver here, and I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to change the scale to two. And so what that shows now is it just emphasizes the, the um, it, it emphasizes the, the, uh, um, the, the, the better, the better data values. So does everybody, does everybody want to want to have a go at that for 30 seconds? Minute? Does everybody see how to do that? Okay. Because what happened here was that the and, and this is something that, that some of you I know from, from, you know from knowledge of the work that you've done will be completely across this and others of you may not be. And that is that the data from the GeoCam cool Toolkit uh, provided was in AGD84, um, AMG54. So it's not in a current projection. It's not in the same projection as everything else. And what that means is that it's in a different position. So I'm, now I'm just going to import. So if we go, go to the file, file menu and choose import, and then choose ASCII. Has everybody got that? File, import, ASCII, column file. And that brings up. So I'm, in, I'm already in at Eloise Atlas Files version 3, but you might have to go find it. So it's where the, the, the version 3 Atlas was. And if you go down to Geochemistry Exercise and choose Eloise MSG GDA 94 version 2, is anybody completely lost? Or are you sort of following along? So the e Eloise MSG GDA 94 version 2. And when you double click on that, it comes up with a, it, it, it asks you what the X, Y, and Z coordinates are. So the X coordinate is Easting GDA 94. The Y coordinate is Northing GDA 94. And the Z coordinate is Z GDA 94. So I've just snap these to a DTM in another program, you can't do it in here. And uh, this, is what, this is what comes out of that. So if we apply the same, so we'll go back to silver, um, which is, it's actually in the original data, there's a number in front of the, in front of the different elements, um, and, and we'll more or less do the same, same thing Make it a make it. I'll make it cubes rather than spheres, um, and take it up to a bigger size. Scale it by the same number. Two. 
Has, uh, has anybody managed to, to actually do that? Good, a few. Okay, so how many of you are completely across what happens if you misplot something like this, the, the difference in positioning between AGD84 or AGD66 and, and GDA94? How many of you are not across it? How many, how many of you are quite surprised to hear that this is the case? Nobody looks like. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, my, maybe I'm wasting time here, but anyway, the, this is the, that's the data in, in uh, AGD84, and that's the data in GDA94. So it is, yeah, it's about 180, 200 meters, 200 meters difference. So, so it's worthwhile. <laughs> it's worthwhile dealing with those. Um, This is all in, in GDA94, MGA54, except for the geochemistry. The geochemistry went in in the wrong position, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to hide this geochemistry because it's incorrect. This is the correct geochemistry. So, what... Um, in, in, let's, let's, not, let's not bother with the Gore one for now because that's really esoteric, but I thought it might be useful. Let's just do the same thing now with the Aqua Regia soils. So if we go again, file, import, ASCII, column file, and we'll go to Eloise AQR GDA94. And we'll do the same thing, change the X coordinate to Easting, Y coordinate to Northing, Z coordinate to Z. And that's now the, the aqua regia soils for the same, same area, um, which are, you know, absolutely conventional soils, so it's a little bit easier to deal with. Um, sphere, the 20. We'll scale, um, uh, what are we looking at here? So. so let's look at silver. And we'll look at uh, silver over here and scale it by two. So have a go for for ten minutes or so now. Just this. Uh, the idea now is to is let's just start with let's just take the aqua regia look at silver, copper, bismuth, and, and nickel. Okay, um, so I hope that gave you a little bit of a bit of a bit of an insight into how to, um, you know, how to import some of this stuff in. Um, the other thing that I, I thought I'd put it in here, but what I've, like I said, what I provided um, as part of this was um, the, the, the whole section in the Geochem Toolkit on Eloise where they um, they actually, the reason I chose these elements wasn't, wasn't because I'd worked through it all and decided these would be the best things to plot. These were some of the elements that, that, um, that Keith and Richard Lilly and, and Joe Tang decided was, were the best things to, best ones that actually showed a, a signature for LOE. So, so they felt that, that certainly in the aqua regia that there was some argument you could make for gold or for silver, copper, bismuth and nickel. Um, reflecting the mineralization always with the caveat that we're, you know, you're, you're surveying over a mine site, so, so um, you know, it's dangerous. And, and they also felt that some of the, both the Gore and the MSG had at least, you know, interest, had spatially sensible um, anomalies where you might expect them to be. So, so you know, it's an example of, of the sort of data that's available, um, you know, with the appropriate disclaimers. Um, we're going to, because it's five to five, um, we're going to forego the, the, the true scan, um, the true scan part of the exercise. Um, and, uh, but, I, but I hope that just playing around with Eloise has given you a bit of a feel for, for what's in there. And, um, you know, it's certainly more in, in this atlas entry than, than uh, you know, we were able to find thrown together for, for, for Eloise. So I think it is a, a bit of an advance compared to what's, what was available out there. So, um, you know, thanks very much for, um, for
for going through um, both, of, both of these deposit atlas exercises. Like Nathan said, these are uh, hopefully very soon. These, these ones, probably slightly cleaned up versions, will be up on uh, you know, our website along with, the, uh, along with the actual atlas documents as well. Um, please don't forget to, I'm going to leave, where is it? Fill out the survey. We'll send you a we'll send you a reminder with the link too. That's a pretty hard one to write down, but uh, so thanks very much.